And so ends the highly successful Toyota 1000 Desert Race. Swaziland and the start of the 1988 Silverline Swazi Spa 500 off-road race, which recently made a welcome return to the South African racing calendar after an absence of one year. Despite the fact that the race boasted no championship status, the event attracted a healthy entry of 27 cars and 77 motorcycles, who prepared to do battle against one another and the Swazi elements north of Mbabane. First away from the line in the short preliminary race on the Friday were the modified saloon cars led by the Volkswagen Beetles of Hermann Swartz and Jacques Roux, the Stothek brothers, Freddy and Francis, kilometers around the Royal Swazi Sun Hotel on the Friday to determine the starting order for the main race the next day. The Nissan Safari of Foster and Kutsia led away the commercial vehicles, followed by the similar truck of Jardine and Van der Merwe. Mulder and Kutsia got going in their Nissan, followed by the SVM Jeep of Peter Barnes and Gus Ice, and the large Toyota Land Cruiser of Robin Lacey and Malcolm Cameron. The favorite driver to win the event overall was off-road racing veteran Klaus Degener, accompanied in his two-seater Duckham Sperco Chinoth by regular rally navigator Wiley Harrington. They were soon involved in a tight battle with a Volkswagen of Niels Eriksson. Richard Carolyn was hoping for a good result in his single-seater Raceco, one of the fastest vehicles in the event. The motorcycle competitors had massed starts in their respective classes, leaving one hour after the last four-wheel entrant. The two top contenders were KTM riders Willie Ireland and Hilton Beatty, both just back from the legendary American Baja 1000 Desert Race, where they shared a motorcycle and took the third place. On this event, there would be no sharing and no mercy. The infamous Ezelwany water splash formed part of the route, and the organizers put up a special prize for the competitor who could make the biggest splash. Some competitors decided that discretion would be the better part of valor. Such consideration did not occur to a hard-charging Klaus Degener, who was rapidly moving through the field in the Chinoth and did not show much respect for his slower adversaries. Degener had reason to be in a hurry. Gavin Orbell, in his Mototech Hedgehog, was also carving through the field in determined fashion, and he would eventually set up the quickest time over the first racing section, beating Degener by eight seconds. Also in the hunt was Niels Eriksson, manning his two-seater Volkswagen alone and driving to a fine fourth place on the first day, after being narrowly beaten by Richard Carolyn, who took matters easy at the water splash in his race car. Having started in the first motorcycle group, Kevin Tebbett was the first motorcycle rider to arrive at the water splash. He took the third quickest time for the day. The Swaziland route suited the two-wheel competitors down to the ground, and they were soon catching and passing cars at an almost embarrassing rate. Meanwhile, the water splashing competition went on unabated, claiming those who tackled the obstacle with more enthusiasm than skill. Richard Towers on his Kawasaki tried to keep his feet dry and stay ahead of the KTM of Ralph Nikolai at the same time. The fastest competitor on the course was Hilton Beatty on his KTM, riding faultlessly and smoothly to the overall motorcycle victory. Willie Ireland was less subtle, sometimes catching other competitors unaware on his way to the second quickest time for the day. After a few harsh observations about motorcycle riders, Finkenberg and Lansdale were on their way again. Some of the competitors decided that the course should be treated with a lot of respect, with the resultant slow times, which would see them at the back of the starting grid the next morning. While some people took the term off-road racing a little too literally, spending most time off it. Others were trying to start the Third World War in their efforts to beat one another to the flag. Aspiring fashion model Amanda Penny was one of the three ladies in the race, riding her Kawasaki to the finish line ahead of several male riders. 
The finish line is always a happy sight in an off-road race, sometimes making life dangerous for the officials when certain competitors forget where the brakes are. Neil Gibbons was on hand to ask various competitors why they were there. Hi, what makes a pretty girl like you being involved in a, this type of rough and tough and tumble sport? The thrill, the challenge. I enjoy riding in the countryside. We notice that more and more females, pretty females, are entering these type of events. Yeah, brightens up the scene a bit, I think. <laughs> these off-road machines, especially this Chenoworth, is just something unreal driving it. And I'm almost over the wall. That's all I can do to get even further to this. Good fun. It's better than road running. Get away from the wives and the family, mainly. <laughs> it's the best thing that ever hit the earth. <laughs> um, keeps me out of mischief. <laughs> if you're all frustrated or something like that, you can get rid of your frustrations, get the adrenaline pumping a bit, and yeah, it's enjoyable. Maybe we're crazy. <laughs> I don't know. Following these leaders, Jack Spencer came in sixth in his Sandmaster, ahead of Peter Barnes and Gus Ace in their SVM Jeep, and the Nissan Safari of Leon Jardine and Martin van der Merwe. The sixth motorcycle rider was Kevin Dupont on a KTM, followed by Gavin Nimmo on his Yamaha and Michael Craigie on a Kawasaki. Early the next morning, the competitors were faced with two laps of a 220-kilometer course through some of the most beautiful and exciting off-road terrain in the world. They were led off by Gavin Orbell in his Mototech Hedgehog, followed eight seconds later by Degener and Harrington in the Chinook. Richard Carolyn left two minutes later in his race car, with Niels Eriksson soon in hot pursuit in his two-seater Volkswagen. Though starting in the 19th position, Foster and Wistosen would soon be a force to be reckoned with in their Nissan Skyline. The motorcycles were soon to follow, led off the line by Hilton Beatty on his KTM. <laughs> Willie Ireland followed in his usual spectacular style. Kevin Tebbett on yet another KTM was third off the line, finding time for a cheery wave on the way out. Sion Stain started a ride which would eventually net the sixth place on his KTM, while Malcolm McDermott would also have a successful day on his Kawasaki. The large number of motorcycles on the entry list caused long lines of competitors at the start line waiting to leave on their allotted times. At the quarterway mark, Degener was in the lead in the Chinoth, treating the water splashes with more respect, as the prize for the biggest splash had already been won by Peter Barnes in the SVM Jeep. Gavin Orbell was having gearbox problems with a Mototech Hedgehog and would soon retire from the event. Niels Eriksson was enjoying a remarkable drive in the Volkswagen, keeping the race co of Richard Carolyn behind him. Sections of the route made extremely high speeds possible, leaving competitors very little time to admire the beautiful Swaziland scenery. Foster and Wustesen were still on their remarkable comeback trail in the Nissan Safari, making a spectacular sight on the grassy hills. In the motorcycle section, KTM riders Hilton Beatty and Willie Ireland were fighting a titanic battle with their similar riding style apparent at the water splash. Kevin Tebbett was not quite as smooth as the two leaders, but hung on to third place tenaciously on his KTM.
Kawasaki riders McDermott and Craigie fought a private duel for a large part of the event, resolved in the favor of McDermott when Craigie had to retire with mechanical problems. Hodgson, having worked his way up from 11th starting position, was well on his way to an eventual 5th place on his KTM. As is normally the case in Swaziland, the locals were enthusiastic spectators, cheering on every scooter as it went past, while one could get extremely lonely on other parts of the route. Having swapped his single-seater car for a two-seater because he was tired of getting lost, Klaus Degener was less than amused when navigator Wiley Harrington sent him on the wrong route, losing the pair some 15 minutes. Once again, the motorcycle riders were rapidly catching the car drivers, with Hilton Beatty opening up a gap between him and second man Willie Ireland. Ireland was experiencing mechanical problems with his KTM, causing him to stop for some roadside repairs. This turned into an unfriendly roadside conference with second place car driver Niels Eriksson, who had apparently been passed and annoyed by the motorcycle rider earlier. Richard Carolyn was having a smooth drive in the race car, at this stage holding down the third place in the car category. Meanwhile, Willie Ireland pushed his crippled KTM to the nearby refuel stop to have it fixed without losing his second place to the tenacious Kevin Tebbett. Foster and Oosthuizen were still the heroes of the event in their Nissan Skyline, passing competitor after competitor on their way to an eventual fifth place. Ever polite Jack Spencer moved over and waved Andy Smales through when the Kawasaki rider caught up with his Sandmaster. Going through the second loop of the route, Hilton Beatty extended his lead further on the KTM, using the rougher parts of the route to full advantage on his well handling machine. Willie Ireland made a determined effort to stay with the flying beatie, but to no avail, and he eventually settled for the second place after exchanging some views with spectators on the way. Kevin Tebbett did not have time for a chat, as he was busy closing the gap between himself and Ireland. At the last refuel and marshal checkpoint, victory was beckoning for Hilton Beatty, and the ultra-professional Butch Hirsch racing team made no mistakes as they replenished the KTM. Uh, Klaus Degener and Wiley Harrington in the Chinoth had since built up a lead of 30 minutes over their nearest rivals. John Hodgson was nearing the end of a steady and impressive ride, which would culminate in a fifth overall and third place class finish. Malcolm McDermott, here just behind Hodgson, managed to get past soon after to clinch the fourth place overall and a class win. Niels Eriksson was another competitor with reason to feel satisfied with his performance, which would yield his best ever result in an off-road event. Richard Carolyn was on his way to a class victory and third place overall in his race co after a careful and trouble-free run. 
The experienced Jack Spencer brought his Sandmaster home in fourth place and won his class, narrowly ahead of the still hard-charging Foster and Wistazen in the Nissan Safari, who also took a class win. The only lady competitor to complete the route was Hilary Lewis, who took 28th position out of 39 finishers on her Kawasaki. Following the leaders on the screen, the various class winners were Hilton Beatty, Kevin Tebbett, Shane McKinnon, Henry Slubbert, Malcolm McDermott, Errol Dalton, Derek Purcell, with KTM taking the Manufacturer's Award. The car class victors were Swart and Brew, Foster and Westhausen, Mulder and Kutsia, Degener and Harrington, Carolyn and Spencer with Nissan. After Jimmy McRae's emphatic and long-awaited success,